Mike Weber. What I want to do is talk about objects and their relationships. Um, and what I want to give you is some examples on setting up uh, some situations. So what we're looking at is, first of all, starting off with what kind of object types are we talking about? Nagios is made up of all kinds of object types, and you all recognize these kinds of objects. And they have these interconnections. And these interconnections are important to recognize as an administrator because they can be gotchas, and they can also be powerful ways to leverage your management of your Nagios system. So when we talk about inheritance basics, We've got three things that you always want to think about. You've got the name of the object. So name, it could be template name, but it could be a service or a, a host. You've got use. Whenever you see that word use, this is a reference to what template, what other information am I going to pull into this? Now, you guys that work on Nagios Core, you can look at this and say, oh, yeah, I recognize this. makes sense to me. We add this, do this. I can recognize templates. The Nagios core people, because they work with those, those config files closer, uh, kind of have an advantage over this whole concept of inheritance because it's not as intuitive. You have to think about it. But the Nagios XI guys, this is kind of under the hood. And it's easy to make mistakes. And it's easy to do things that you regret. And so those are some of the things we want to talk about. So let's take an example. You want to monitor, uh, let's say you want to monitor 100 search engines. If you monitor these each individually, you're going to set up the host. You're going to set up those service checks or those metrics that you want for that host. You've got CPU, you've got RAM, you've got disk space. You're checking the web page, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do these individually, what happens is you have all of these local settings. This is an important word. Again, local means that it's in the host or in the service. These are things that um, you cannot change with a template. So in other words, if you put check interval in this service, it can't be changed by a, a template up above it. It's going to be controlled by this local setting. So if you look and think of this as layers, this bottom layer where you create your host or your service check, if you put settings in there, you're done. You can't change them. You have to touch that file. So if you make uh, create 100 search engines with 20 checks each, then you've got all of those. If you set them up locally, you have to touch them all again to change it. You're going to be spending a week doing that. And you don't want to do that. And it's an easy thing to fall into. So local settings, when you set those local settings, you're done. You're going to have to come back and change each one of these settings that you set. This is the check settings tab. There's the alert settings. So if you change contacts or your notification interval, any of these changes, notification period, any of these, you set them locally, you're done. So this is the first thing you have to think about. Hosts and local settings must be managed individually. Click, change that one. Click, change that one. Click, change that one. It's not a fun experience. This is not what you want to be doing with your extra time. Same with services. So the solution, we need to leverage the object inheritance. You need to leverage it to your advantage. So let's look at hosts first. That's the easiest place to start. So same illustration. We've got individual management. This is not what you want to do. So what I want you to stop and think about is whenever you have a group of devices that are similar, this is the biggest test, similar devices, devices that do similar things. So for example, Similar devices. This could be Windows servers. This could be Linux servers. This could be SQL servers. This could be web servers. You look for similarities. 
You look for numbers. So if you have, even if you have five of these, use them, manage them with a template because you can change it quick. If you have 100 of them, you got to use those templates. So the first thing you're looking for is these similarities. So if you're doing search engines, you know that these are similar types of devices. In, this is Nagios uh, 2012. The icon is blue here. Uh, in 2011, it's orange. does the same thing, basically. But you can see it helps you recognize relationships. So you know that there are relationships, whether you're using core or XI, you always have relationships. And so you need to think about the fact that these relationships can be working for you or they can ruin your weekend, one of the two. So you need to leverage them to your advantage. So this is where we're starting to go now. We want to manage these search engines, but we don't want them to manage us. So we're going to create a host group. Host groups, similarities. So these search engines are similar. So guess what? The contacts are going to be similar. The people that are going to fix this stuff are typically all going to be the same kinds of people, same kinds of problems. The services that you use on these hosts are going to be similar. You want CPU. You want RAM. You want the web page to know it's up, et cetera, et cetera. So, these things, we're going to tie these all together into this host group. And we're going to do that for one. We're going to just say, OK, we want to set up Bing. Only set up one. Tune it. Spend time on it. Perfect it. And then drop in the other 100. Bam, it's done. If you just do one right, you only have to do one right, and then you can drop them all into that host group, and you are done. And if you want to change it, one click, they're all changed. Any setting you want to ch change, you can push it to all of them. So that's where we're headed. So similar groups. So of course, Windows and Linux, you're not using the same checks on those two. Uh, network devices. But also, when you think about Windows, you got SQL Server. Huh. So if you got a Windows Server, uh, you're using Windows metrics. You got the same disk stuff, RAM. Those things you could use on all your Windows servers. If you had SQL servers, you've got specific checks you want to run those SQL servers. Here's another group. Ah, you could combine these groups. So you could have Windows template, and then you could push in your, C your SQL template, and you could, you could really push out a lot of service checks, and you just click, click, all those things are running at full speed and you don't have to do any management because it's all set. That's what we want to talk about, and that's what we want to accomplish here. Here's the example. So you got the Windows host group, and so you have Windows metrics. So you've got several kinds of servers here. So these Windows metrics, disk, RAM, etc., they're going to go for this server, which is maybe it's a file server, maybe it does something else strange. Uh, it's gonna, then you got the IIS, and these are going to have another template. So they're all going to get the Windows metrics, but they're going to have another template that's going to push out their IIS stuff. And you've got another template for these SQL servers. So you can stack these templates together and fine tune this so that your device can pull from all these different sources and you can put it together like a puzzle and you have a powerful way to manage your resources. So this is what you want to do, something similar. Now there's, you know, design the design that works for you. But this is one way to look at it. You create a host group. These are similar devices. So your contacts, you would list them, put them into a contact group. They'd be tied to the host group. Then you create a host template. Now this is just for hosts at this point. So your check settings, your alert settings, your miscellaneous settings, this is all placed in the template, not the local settings. Then you drop your host in, connect it up to these two, you're done. That's it. It's all set. So let's look at an example. So we'll look at search engines. So here's our host group, and it's search engines. Now, you'll notice in my naming convention, uh, everything is going to have the word search engine. 
I like this kind of concept. You can do what you want. But I like this concept because all of you probably have other administrators. When they open that stuff up, I like them to be able to see and say, OK, search engines, search engines template, host, all that stuff. Everything that ser says search engines, it's all one package. It helps them think about the troubleshooting aspect. So that's why I have done that. So here's the host group, and that's created. Then the contact group. Notice search engine contacts. Any administrator will know this is going to be going with search engine. And then they can manage the contacts. There's Fred and Sue. They're the experts. They drop them in there. And then the host group adds the contact group. And then we create a host template. Now in this host template, we're going to put everything in here. Everything. So for example, here's the check command. Check host alive, HTTP. We're not going to use ping. And guess what? If we decided to use ping later, we can change it one, one location, all the search engines have been changed. This is the power, is we put all of our details in the template. We leave those local settings completely empty so we can push whatever we want to. So here's the search engine host template. The names get long, but it helps to figure out how they're connected. So we've got our check command, any of the variables that we want. Here is the check settings. Again, this is the host template. This is not the host. So we put in our check interval, all of our stuff, everything that we want, we put in here. Our alert settings, we put in, we say, hey, we want 45 minute notification. Uh, we put in our notification period. Anything that you want, you put it into this host template. And then you create your host. And look, the host is empty. We've got a host name, an IP address. That's it, and it's active. But it's got nothing else. We put nothing in here. Leave it empty, because you can control it with a template and push all those settings to it and change hundreds of them all at once. So this is the key, is keeping those local settings empty. So we take that. We're going to then tie our host to the host template. So there's the search engine host template. And then we're going to add our hosts into the host group. So there's Google and Yahoo. And so this is what we've got. So the red lines indicate it's connected to the host group and the host template. Everything is all in place. Now, it's some work to create for the first one. But after that, the next 100 is just creating the host, host name, IP, dropping it in here. That's it. And where you're going to see, we're going to tie the services in and it'll pull in all the services that you want to do as well. So everything is pu pulled into one package, and you can control all of the settings from one location. So when you create or create hosts and services, one aspect is the creation aspect. Another thing that you always have to think about is visibility. You want your people to be able to see similar devices in groups. So here's a pretty small example, but search engines. So if they are interested in search engines, they have that visibility to know these are the search engines, these are the checks. It helps them figure out. It helps with reporting. So think about visibility. This is not your primary purpose. Management as an administrator is what matters, the long-term management. But visibility is part of the aspect here. So you have your host group management. Now you can control all of your hosts through this process. Now, services. Of course, this is more complex um, to set up simply because you have a whole lot more of them. There are a whole lot more variables. So we need to set up our services. Here is the template concept. So you can see down here we still have the host group. We're going to use the host group. These are similar devices. So we've got our, our let's say we've got our Windows SQL servers. That's, that's the host group we're talking about here, or just Windows. And then we've got our service template. This service template is going to use the same contacts, because the people that are fixing your Windows servers 
for the host, the same people that are going to be fixing the services, probably. Now, if this template was SQL, then maybe this is your SQL contacts. These are the people that are your SQL, your database guys. Um, that, that's a possibility. But you tie it into this service template. So this service template has the same concept. It's a group of things that you're going to be using. Now you put in your check settings, your alert settings, your miscellaneous settings, and then eventually you're going to drop in all the services. Again, tie them to the template, tie them to the host group. So here's a decision you've got to make. So I'm going to create a service template. What is the similarity that I'm going to, what is the similarity I'm going to use with this? One of the things that you could do is time-based. For example, check interval. This is a, a major way that a lot of people will define their service templates is this is a service template for 10-minute checks. This is a service template for four-minute checks. So you have these two metrics already set up uh, in, in that way. So you, they, it's based on time. It's eventually going to be based on OS and time. So most organizations will set up, say, for example, a 10-minute check for Linux, 10-minute check for Windows, because you obviously have different contacts, yet you're using different services, obviously, et cetera. You could set it up based on operating system, active, passive, but what you want to think about with your service uh, template is, again, a group of what's going to group these things, a number of things that are similar. So we're going to take this example, 10-minute Linux checks. So this, these are checks, and they can be any kind of checks that are going to happen for uh, Linux servers on a 10-minute basis. That's what we've decided is the, the deciding factor. Now, of course, we're not going to set the check command because you're going to use this for all kinds of checks. This is not, this is not a setting that you're going to set. But we are going to set our check settings. So there's our 10-minute interval. There's our retry, max check attempts, check period. All this stuff is being set up here. Our alert settings. We're setting up notification 90. We'd set up our notification period. All of this stuff is placed in this service template. So we've got a service template that has a time period that is similar that we're going to use for all of those services. And then we create our contacts. Those contacts are probably already created, so you connect that to the contact group. And here's our service check. Now, this is where you make all your definition in your command. So this is a pretty simple one, check HTTP. But all of your arguments, everything that you would put in here, this is your check. That's it. It's empty. Leave it empty so you can control it with your templates. So all of a sudden, you want to use uh, five-minute checks from 10 minutes. Just pull it out of there. Put it in the five-minute. You you're controlling it with something else. Um, now. If you decide that you have 20 servers and they all want to run at 10-minute checks, and that's fine, but you have one that you want to run at something else, you can always set those locally, and it overrides the template. But think about that, because if you want to change it again, you've got to go back to that. So if you have groups of things that you're going to want to change and manipulate, use the templates to make those changes. If you think that this is going to be an aberration forever, then go ahead and set those local settings there, and they will take precedence, and the inheritance will not be able to flow through. So we then take this service and add the time in OS. So this is 10 minute. And we're going to, the first one, you have to add a base host so you can get into the service group stuff going. Uh, add the host group, and there it is. So if this is our service, whatever service it is, and this is our 10-minute check, then it's connected and it's got the host group. Now, the next one, all I draw, do is draw my host into the host group. All my services are all set up. So spend your time setting up your services, get them perfect, 
on one machine. So if you've got SQL servers, take your time, take extra days, set up every one of those checks that you want on a SQL server. All the Windows metrics, all of the, the SQL checks, make it perfect. Take time, spend days and days watching it, monitoring, having your database guys check it. And once that's right, drop in your other 100 servers and you're ready to go. They're all rolled out all at once. And then if you need to make a change, use your templates again because you have that power of the template. So here's a, here's a illustration. So you got the service temp template. Now the check interval is 10. So if you're pushing that and everything, these two boxes are tied to this template um, to 10, and this one is also tied to the template. But see, this one is different because I've set it locally at 5. Nothing is going to change that except a local change. So if you set it locally, it's going to take precedence. But these, I've got it at 10. I change it in my template to 8. They change to 8. So I can push those things wherever I want to go. So that's, that's the idea that we're trying to do. OK, so once you have your template set up, What's it like to add stuff? So it's a three-step process. Here's adding a host. We want to add a new host. So we want to tie it to a host group and the host template that we've set up. We create the host. Host name, IP address. Here we're using just uh, bing.com. We add the host to the host template. We add the host to the host group. We're done. That's all you got to do. Simple, powerful. Here's the service management. So what we want to do is tie our services to the template and then drop our host in that host group. So we create the service, add it to the host group, add it to the service template, add the service template, and we're done. So. The power of objects is trying to leverage this stuff to your advantage so that you're not doing that painful click, change, click, change, click, change when you have all those local settings. So that's the real key is trying to put templates up above all of your, your um, objects, which is your hosts and your service checks. So. Um, now, before I ask for questions, I see that the microphone's not here, so maybe it is. OK, so let me open it up for questions. Here it comes. So once we have a one-off change, like you mentioned earlier, I know the local setting takes precedence, but what if you t wipe that away later? Uh, you know, just you with, with the template, therefore? Yeah, if you removed it and made it empty, yeah, then you can, it's back to the template. So whatever's above it will push down unless there's a local setting. Okay. Yes. Can one host be a member of several service groups? So can you create individual service groups and attach to them? Right, and let me see if I can, uh, I can go back. Yeah, miss. I think this is what you're talking about. Yes. So, so basically, you can create multiple, the, a server's going to do multiple things. You've got metrics, of course, and then it's going to have a, a primary function. Maybe it's SQL, maybe it's a web server. But maybe it's all three. Mm -hmm. It could use all three of these. Yes. And you could roll that all out. So you could have literally hundreds of checks that would go to one server, but they're in different groups and pull them all in with that same, right. same idea. Right. Thank you. Yeah. It's really the way you got to go because it's very powerful to set up your servers. But most servers are limited in their role. But you could do that, sure. Other questions? Hey, 
say, let's say you're unwise enough to have SQL and IIS running on the same server. And uh, for that unwise person want to do to service groups, it's kind of tagged to, to, to his point there. Uh, would you recommend doing a service group for SQL and, uh, where you have everyone including that guy? And then another one for IIS where, again, you have everyone including that server for yeah, that group? And and I see what you're, w this, the decision to, m to do that would be kind of how many other situations do you have like that? So, for example, if you had 20 servers and they had tons of stuff, maybe you just create one service template to do all that because they're so similar. This is assuming that you have lower number of SQL server and lower number of IIS servers. So you could do it either way. It kind of depends what's the easiest for you. But if you have, for in this example, if you had um, 50 SQL servers and 50 IIS servers, it makes sense to separate that and maybe have 10 that do both. Then you could push that all that way as well. So it kind of depends on your setup. You have those options. And so it's just what will work best for you. OK, thanks. Yeah. So I keep hearing the, the, the term service group thrown around, um, and maybe I'm missing something because I, I don't use XI, but we're, we're really talking about a service template, not a service group, correct? Yep. yep. Okay, because a service group would I'm, be mainly yeah, for yeah. like reporting on like services. Yeah, and so this is actually a service template, you're right. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned that because I... I just wanted to make yeah, sure I understood. Yeah. You understand, but we didn't. Any other questions? So you could use these service, these these situations, these templates, to correct problems that you have as well. So, for example, um, in the earlier session, I was talked ab about problems that you're trying to fix. Don't be afraid to use these templates to fix your problems. If you see you have um, 20 servers that have a similar problem, don't touch every one of those servers. Use a template and solve it with a template and do them all at once. Save yourself the time. So for example, if you're getting a whole pack of warnings because of something you forgot, you forgot to set a, a check interval or something that you forgot, a notification interval, uh, use a template to solve your problems. So these templates are there. Um, and, and you guys that are Nagios core, you, you have a big advantage over the Nagios XI guys. You read Ethan's older manuals. A lot of people have just kind of left those things in the, in the lurch, but he's got a lot of good information. Pick up those manuals and read about some of the concepts that he's talking about, and objects especially, because he understood it. And it's important that we understand it because you manage it gives you that leverage to manage efficiently. So I really do recommend going back and picking up those manuals. You can find them all over online. And uh, they, they are very beneficial. Anything else? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just wrap it up and uh, wrap up a few minutes early. So um, unless there's a question, I'll open up one last time. Okay, so thanks for participating, and uh, I wish you the best. All right, guys, you got about a half an hour to your next session, so time. dropping it in here. That's it. And we are going to see, we're going to tie the services in and it'll pull in all the services that you want to do as well. So everything is pu pulled into one package and you can control all of the settings from one location. So when you create or create hosts and services, one aspect is the creation aspect. 
Another thing that you always have to think about is visibility. You want your people to be able to see similar devices in groups. So here's a pretty small example, but search engines. So if they're interested in search engines, they have that visibility to know these are the search engines, these are the checks. It helps them figure out, it helps with reporting. So think about visibility. This is not your primary purpose. Management as an administrator is what matters, the long-term management. But visibility is part of the aspect there. So you have your host group management. Now you can control all of your hosts through this process. Now, services. Of course, this is more complex um, to set up simply because you have a whole lot more of them. There are a whole lot more variables. So we need to set up our services. Here is the template concept. So you can see down here we still have the host group. We're going to use the host group. These are similar devices. So we've got our, our let's say we've got our Windows SQL servers. That's, that's the host group we're talking about here, or just Windows. And then we've got our service template. This service template is going to use the same contacts, because the people that are fixing your Windows servers for the host, the same people that are going to be fixing the services, probably. Now, if this template was SQL, then maybe this is your SQL contacts. These are the people that are your SQL, your database guys. Um, that, that's a possibility. But you tied it into this service template. So this service template has the same concept. It's a group of things that you're going to be using. Now you put in your check settings, your alert settings, your miscellaneous settings, and then eventually you're going to drop in all the services. Again, time to the template, time to the host group. So, Here's a decision you've got to make. So I'm going to create a service template. What is the similarity that I'm going to, what is the similarity I'm going to use with this? One of the things that you could do is time-based. For example, check interval. This is a, a major way that a lot of people will define their service templates is this is a service template for 10-minute checks. This is a service template for four-minute checks. So you have these two metrics already set up uh, in, in that way. So you, they, it's based on time. It's eventually going to be based on OS and time. So most organizations will set up, say, for example, a 10-minute check for Linux, 10-minute check for Windows, because you obviously have different contacts, yet you're using different services, obviously, et cetera. You could set it up based on operating system, active, passive. But what you want to think about with your service uh, template is, again, a group of what's going to group these things, a number of things that are similar. So we're going to take this example, 10-minute Linux checks. So this, these are checks, and they can be any kind of checks, that are going to happen for uh, Linux servers on a 10-minute basis. That's what we've decided is the, the deciding factor. Now, of course, we're not going to set the check command because you're going to use this for all kinds of checks. This is not, this is not a setting that you're going to set. But we are going to set our check settings. So there's our 10-minute interval. There's our retry, max check attempts, check period. All this stuff is being set up here. Our alert settings. We're setting up notification 90. We'd set up our notification period. All of this stuff is placed in this service template. So we've got a service template that has a time period that is similar that we're going to use for all of those services. And then we create our contacts. Those contacts are probably already created, so you connect that to the contact group. And here's our service check. Now, this is where you make all your definition in your command. So this is a pretty simple one, check HTTP. But all of your arguments, everything that you put in here, this is your check. That's it. It's empty. Leave it empty so you can control it with your templates. So all of a sudden, you want to use uh, five-minute checks from 10 minutes. Just pull it out of there, put it in the five-minute. You you're controlling it with something else. Um, now. If you decide that you have 
20 servers and they all want to run at 10 minute checks and that's fine, but you have one that you want to run at something else, you can always set those locally and it overrides the template. But think about that because if you want to change it again, you got to go back to that. So if you have groups of things that you're going to want to change and manipulate, use the templates to make those changes. If you think that this is going to be an aberration forever, then go ahead and set those local settings there and they will take precedence and the inheritance will not be able to flow through. So we then take this service and add the time in OS, so this is 10 minute, and we're going to, the first one you have to add a base host so you can get into the service group stuff going. Uh, add the host group. And there it is. So if this is our service, whatever service it is, and this is our 10 minute check, then it's connected and it's got the host group. Now, the next one, all I draw, do is draw my host into the host group. All my services are all set up. So spend your time setting up your services. Get them perfect on one machine. So if you've got SQL servers, Take your time, take extra days, set up every one of those checks that you want on a SQL server. All the Windows metrics, all of the, the SQL checks, make it perfect. Take time, spend days and days watching it, monitoring, having your database guys check it. And once that's right, drop in your other 100 servers and you're ready to go. They're all rolled out all at once. And then if you need to make a change, use your templates again because you have that power of the template. So here's a, here's a illustration. So you got the service temp template. Now the check interval is 10. So if you're pushing that and everything, these two boxes are tied to this template um, to 10, and this one is also tied to the template. But see, this one is different because I've set it locally at 5. Nothing is going to change that except a local change. So if you set it locally, it's going to take precedence. But these, I've got it at 10. I change it in my template to 8. They change to 8. So I can push those things wherever I want to go. So that's, that's the idea that we're trying to do. OK, so once you have your template set up, what's it like to add stuff? So it's a three-step process. Here's adding a host. We want to add a new host, so we want to tie it to a host group and the host template that we've set up. We create the host. Host name, IP address. Here we're using just uh, bing.com. We add the host to the host template. We add the host to the host group. We're done. That's all you got to do. Simple, powerful. Here's the service management. So what we want to do is tie our services to the template and then drop our host in that host group. So we create the service, add it to the host group, add it to the service template, add the service template, and we're done. So the power of objects is trying to leverage this stuff to your advantage so that you're not doing that painful click change, click change, click change when you have all those local settings. So that's the real key is trying to put templates up above all of your, your um, objects, which is your hosts and your service checks. So um, now, before I ask for questions, I see that the microphone's not here, so maybe it is. Okay, so let me open it up for questions. Here it comes. So once we have a one-off change, like you mentioned earlier, I know the local setting takes precedence, but what if you t wipe that away later? Uh, you know, just you with, with the template, therefore? Yeah, if you removed it and made it empty, yeah, then you can, it's back to the template. So whatever's above it will push down unless there's a local setting. Okay. Yes.
Can one host be a member of several service groups? So can you create individual service groups and attach to them? Right, and let me see if I can, uh, I can go back. And let's I think this is what you're talking about. Yes. So, so basically, you can create multiple, the, a server's gonna do multiple things. You got metrics, of course, and then it's gonna have a, a primary function. Maybe it's SQL, maybe it's a web server, but maybe it's all three. Mm -hmm. It could use all three of these, yes. and you could roll that all out. So you could have literally hundreds of checks that would go to one server, but they're in different groups and pull them all in with that same, okay. same idea. Great, thank you. Yeah. It's really the way you gotta go because it's very powerful to set up your servers, but most servers are limited in their role, but you could do that, sure. Other questions? Okay, let's say you're unwise enough to have SQL and IIS running on the same server, and uh, for that unwise person wanna do two service groups, it's kind of tagged to, to, to his point there. Uh, would you recommend doing a service group for SQL and, uh, where you have everyone including that guy, and then another one for IIS where, again, you have everyone including that server for yeah, that group? And, and I see what you're, w this, the decision to, m to do that would be kind of how many other situations do you have like that? So for example, if you had 20 servers and they had tons of stuff, maybe you just create one service template to do all that because they're so similar. This is assuming that you have lower number of SQL server and lower number of IIS servers. So you could do it either way. It kind of depends what's the easiest for you but if you have, for in this example, if you had um, 50 SQL servers and 50 IS servers, it makes sense to separate that and maybe have 10 that do both. Then you could push that all that way as well. So it kind of depends on your setup. You have those options, and so it's just what will work best for you. Okay, thanks. Yep. So I keep hearing the, the, the term service group thrown around, um, and maybe I'm missing something because I, I don't use XI, but we're, we're really talking about a service template, not a service group, correct? Yep. yep. Okay, because a service group would I'm, be mainly yeah, for yeah. like reporting on like services. Yeah, and so this is actually a service template, you're right. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned that because I... I just wanted to make yeah, sure I understood. Yeah. You understand, but we didn't. Any other questions? So you could use these service, these, these situations, these templates, to correct problems that you have as well. So for example, um, in the earlier session, I was talked ab about problems that you're trying to fix. Don't be afraid to use these templates to fix your problems. If you see you have, um, 20 servers that have a similar problem, don't touch every one of those servers. Use a template and solve it with a template and do them all at once. Save yourself the time. So for example, if you're getting a whole pack of warnings because of something you forgot, you forgot to set a, a check interval or something that you forgot, a notification interval, uh, use a template to solve your problems. So these templates are there um, and, and you guys that are Nagios core, you, you have a big advantage over the Nagios XI guys. You read Ethan's older manuals. A lot of people have just kind of left those things in the, in the lurch, but he's got a lot of good information. Pick up those manuals and read about some of the concepts that he's talking about, and objects especially, because he understood it. And it's important that we understand it because you manage it gives you that leverage to manage efficiently. So I really do recommend going back and picking up those manuals. You can find them all over online. And uh, they, they are very beneficial.
Anything else? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just wrap it up and uh, wrap up a few minutes early. So um, unless there's a question, I'll open up one last time. Okay, so thanks for participating and uh, I wish you the best.